Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I figured we would do a quick review on coronavirus since that is in the news everywhere. So, um, coronavirus, not just the new one, coronavirus has been around for many years. There's many different types of coronavirus and types that we've been dealing with for many years, usually come in the fall and winter months. It's very similar to flu and the symptoms, um, but this new novel coronavirus has caused a lot of mortality, especially since we haven't seen it before. So, uh, and it came from Wuhan City in China, ground zero. It's spread since then and on January 30th, 2020 of this year, it was considered an international emergency, actually the same time that we had our first case in the United States. And then the mortality of coronavirus right now is sitting at 2.4 or 3%. Um, so that means 2.4 to 3% people that get coronavirus end up dead. So that's actually a pretty high mortality considering that our flu mortality is currently 0.05%. So it's something to definitely pay attention to and have some preventative measures put in place. My hospital currently has um, screening done with every patient that comes into the emergency department. And we ask them, uh, the most screening questions that you ask in the emergency department are, are you suicidal? Have you been out of the country in the last three months? So our procedural process and screening process for Wuhan City um, starts there. So if they answer yes, we ask where. And usually that question was for tuberculosis patients and if they've been in contact with anyone with TB. But now we're just expanding that question, well, have you been to China? And if you have ever been to China, um, I'm not talking about visiting, um, even if you have connecting flight through that those airports, um, then you immediately, and you're coming in with cough, cold uh, symptoms, you immediately, you put on a mask, um, you, we put you in a negative pressure room if we can, which is not required, but it's something um, that we have put in place at our hospital. We put the patient on a mask, we put you on job for precautions, and we go from there. Um, so far, I haven't had any cases. Uh, hasn't gotten to me. I've had a couple people from Japan, but that didn't count. Um, our procedure right now is just in China. But let's talk a little bit more about the coronavirus. So when it comes to the symptoms of coronavirus, it's very similar to flu. So you're gonna have your upper respiratory-like symptoms. Um, fever is going to be reported in 99% of the cases. And then I think dry cough is in 59% of the cases. Myalgias are in 35% of the cases. And then a bunch of people might present with shortness of breath after five days. And the diagnosis of coronavirus, you just have to have a high suspicion. So anyone that's been traveling from China coming in with upper respiratory-like symptoms and especially a fever needs a coronavirus workup. And that um, to diagnose the actual virus, that is a viral or nasal swab PCR. Um, and then obviously, if you're very concerned about the patient, you're gonna wanna test for other abnormalities, um, so complications thereof, so sepsis, pneumonia is the most common complication. Um, if they're septic with their vital signs, um, make sure you evaluate that. Always get labs and electrolytes and white blood cell counts in these patients, the lactic acid. Um, and if you suspect sepsis, always get blood cultures. Um, but the actual diagnosis is a nasal swab PCR. And the complications of coronavirus usually happen in the immunocompromised young and old. Uh, usually young patients uh, that are healthy, otherwise have no other past medical history, will, they just need to go home, really contain themselves in their house, and they can have outpatient um, symptomatic treatment. And the treatment for coronavirus, there's no specific treatment, like with the flu, there's Tamiflu, there's nothing with coronavirus, Tamiflu is not recommended, um, really it's just symptomatic treatment, so lots of fluids, lots of rest, um, antipyretics. But if they have any complications from coronavirus, pneumonia being the most common, and right now what you'll see in our chest x-ray is usually a bilateral infiltrate um, or ground glass appearance on chest x-ray. It's not really a focalized consolidation in this case, but either way, you're gonna wanna start to treat them for a bacterial infection at that time. And then extreme cases have end organ failure, respiratory distress syndrome, or if you suspect sepsis at any time, then you're gonna need a full workup in that case as well. Like I said before, 
The treatment really isn't anything other than supportive unless you have a secondary bacterial infection or complication like respiratory distress or pneumonia. But really what you're gonna to wanna to do with these patients is just prevent any further spread of this coronavirus. So as soon as you suspect that they might have it, you need to put them on precautions. You need to exercise good hand hygiene. They need to be wearing their mask. They need to be wearing their mask appropriately. You know patients don't know how to wear a mask. Teach them, show them, make sure it's covered around their nose. And then uh, restrictions on travel as well. There's a lot of restrictions um, put in place internationally on travel, especially people coming from China need to be observed for at least 14 days because that's the incubation period for coronavirus. They develop any type of symptoms at all and they just need to watch that thereof. Um, so really the United States has been doing a good job on preventative measures and decreasing the amount of travel coming from those areas and very meticulous on the people we watch and for how long and why. Um, so it's been doing a good job in the United States, but it has been an epidemic in China. So I hope it gets better soon. And I hope you guys learned a little bit from this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next week, guys.